All right, so obviously Paris Bay happened on the weekend with Sonny Colbrelli winning, then Vermeersh, then Matthew Van der Poel. It was a really, really hard addition just because of the weather. It was very muddy, it was very wet, but let's have a look at some power numbers because wow, wow, oh, wow, these are absolutely bonkers. So we have Florian Vermeersh's power data. Colbrelli normally uploads, but he didn't, which is, you know, fair enough. If you upload these data often, you get people like me doing it and then everyone accuses you of doping, which is never great. Anyway, we can see small neutral zone here, 100 watts, 17 degrees, actually quite warm if we really think about it, but just look at the normalized overall, 385 watts for six hours. Now that's a lot. <clears throat> Obviously, Vermish is a big boy, he's like 80 kilos, so you gotta think like, that is actually less than five watts per kilo, but I think putting it in watts per kilo is irrelevant on a flat race in reality, because obviously comparing it to yourself, you know, you might be like, oh, I can never do that. But obviously like you might be able to do similar-ish watts per kilo maybe. Um, but yeah, we'll just talk about in absolutes because I think that's the, uh, that's the key point. I don't do if, buts, or maybe I deal in absolutes. Anyway, the first part of the race was actually quite hard. He got into the early break. Um, well, I don't know if you call it a break. It was basically like a split with half the peloton quite early on. You can see here again, it's 380 watts normalized for the first um, <clears throat> hour and 36. This here is erroneous data, it's not correct. It's just probably because of the barom barometric pressure doesn't work when it rains often, which is how they do the altitude. But yeah, pretty smooth. You know, 1200 calories per hour is pretty crazy. But it, to be honest, like, you know, that this is really where he gets more into the break and the last sort of four hours of it um, is really when he's on his own and in a smaller group um, and especially after Arenberg. So if we look at this from Arenberg, you can see the numbers are actually less, but this is when he was on his own um, with Niels Ekhoff before Colbrelli and the boy Vanderpol ridged up to him. And then you can see actually, if we look at the peak normalized, this is always an interesting because you can start to see where the hard parts are. So 442 watts normalized is actually this section here, which if you look, they would have, they're going into this, the wind was generally coming across. So you think they go into this town, which is really stressful, then they come out. And then that's actually, I think, where the split was made. Um, and you can see it's 411 watts for 20 minutes. So the normalize is actually not too much higher. They're just pulling turns. Um, and then if you look at the whole hour, actually, it does come a slightly different point, um, which I guess you could say is, is more of the, um, uh, is more when the cobble started to come. It was more chaos. I didn't watch all of it, unfortunately. Um, but we, we can then go towards the final of the race because obviously, you know, coming into the final, uh, against Colbrelli, I mean, obviously Moscow was caught and all the rest of it, so it was basically Colbrelli, Boivin had a mechanical, I think it was, and it just left three of them. And um, going into the running, you can see it, it's not too hard, it's 364 normalized, but so they were just swapping turns here, like they, so they, they if you think they come off, this is like the Camphor en Pavelet, or Mons en Pavelet, um cobbled section, which is always very hard. And then they actually come into this part here where you can see is is obviously slightly uphill drag, but um, it's on the road, 346 normalized. They're swapping turns. They're basically just trying to make sure that Wild Van Aert doesn't come back. Um, but you can see here, like I think this is probably a turn here, doesn't up doing about 400 watts up this little berg, this little drag. Um, but coming into the final, he does a really, really big attack here. Um, if you don't know Florian Vermeer, he's actually quite good. He's got a good kick on him uh, and he's also a strong time trial boy. But you know, he did 10 watts per kilo for 16 seconds with a peak of like 13, 27. Like that's pretty good. But Cole Brelli, if you saw it, he closed it straight down, no worries. But we're gonna go into the final sprint because I think this is really interesting. So you can see after that, it basically shut off. 233 normalized, like they're just cruising. There's like nothing going on. Sorry, my hair is absolutely mess. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, and it's really easy. And then it just comes to the velodrome. And if you look at the velodrome again, it was actually very easy. They're all just track standing 37K an hour. And then you can see the peak of the whole race, 1476, comes in the last part. And he does a long sprint. And I think if you watch Lantern or listen to Lantern Rouge's uh, podcast about this, it was quite interesting because he was saying he thinks he could have won. And I'm of the same opinion, really, because he actually did such a long sprint, which often is good. Like, it's hard to come round people because once they've got the gap, then it's really tough to come round because often you're just in the wind. You're not getting much draft. Well, if you wait behind them, sometimes also psychologically, like, oh, they're so strong, but actually they're on the limit as well. Um, but you can see here, 918 watts for 21 seconds. That is, that's big. Like, that's big, like, no matter who you are, whenever, let alone at the end of Roubaix. 
Um, and if you think like he hit a peak of 1476 and then so if we actually look on this sprint here he did 1149 for 12 seconds which again you might say oh that's I mean that's really good to be honest like for, for a lot of people but then you can see he massively faded but held a thousand watts for 16 seconds like look at this peak 15 seconds almost 1100 watts for 15 seconds and that is really good and the key thing to think about this and you know I love my kilojoules burned 7,700. It's absolutely bonkers because obviously normally on like a climbing stage, there's a lot of, there's a lot of climbing, like on the climbing stages, obviously there's a lot of freewheeling on the descents. Therefore, you know, it's never going to be as crazy big um, as it is when it's a pan flat race. Because if you look at the variability index, which is the difference between like, you know, 343, 382, it's very close, which means, you know, he's averaged 343 watts for six hours. And that is just crazy, like actually ridiculous. So on average, he's burning 1200 kilojoules per hour. Now, if you think like, it doesn't really matter like who you are, but I mean, if you're eating, let's say 120 grams an hour, that's 480 calories an hour. So you're losing 800 calories per hour. Like, that's ridiculous. That means your fat burning ability is just bonkers. And obviously, like, you've got a massive tank of glycogen before, but that does mean, like, you know, you, when you do the maths like that, you're like, how much glycogen can your body store? People are like, maybe 4,000, and you're like, or 2,000 calories. Like, that just means you have to be so aerobically fit that you can burn so much fat to actually do this. Because, like, just think about it, 1,200 calories an hour. Like, yeah, you could do that for a couple hours, but, like, you're gonna run out of glycogen because you can't consume more than 120 grams an hour, really. It's just crazy. It's just absolutely bonkers, this whole power part. I just couldn't imagine it. Like, the amount of food the boy must have eaten before the race, the amount of food the boy must have eaten during the race, the amount of threshold that this boy has, the uh, uh, incredible aerobic endurance the man has, and then at the end of it, still wax out 1476 in a sprint. Just bonkers. Just absolutely crazy numbers. Um, so I really hope you did enjoy this video. It's not often that you get to see such an incredible power bar like this Where really, you know, this is like the top of the top of the top like not many things will come close to this But yeah Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. We'll try and keep going on the daily vids. We've got five in a row now, maybe um, Which is always good and uh, we'll see you in the next one